As I mentioned before, if you live further than 200 miles from Portalis, you will have to identify a, a, a proctor other than Dr. Jarman. Okay. If you're within 200 miles, then you simply identify Dr. Jarman as the proctor. Okay. In either case, you should fill out this form that is posted on my stat lab. Note that if you live further than 200 miles away, you need to send the completed form to Judy Privet. If you live within 200 miles, simply send the form to me as an attachment in an email. You notice at the bottom of this, um, this form that there are proctor expectations and student expectations. It's important that the proctor and you, the student, read those and understand those. And again, if you have any questions, please contact me and I will try to clarify. If you are using a proctor other than Dr. Jarman, then you need to have them fill out the final exam completion certification form. Okay. This form is simply a checklist that the proctor will look at and check off to make sure that they're doing everything that they need to be doing as a proctor. And this form needs to be filled out and needs to be sent in with the completed final. The completion dates for the homework and the exams are contained in this file. You'll notice that for each of the homeworks there is a section, an assignment date, and a due date. Okay, the section identifies which sections of the book the, the, the material is coming from. The assignment date identifies when the assignment will be will, will, will be opened in my stat lab for working and the due date is the date at which the assignment needs to be completed in my stat lab. Okay. Uh, be aware that these due dates are firm and it is expected that that you complete your work by the due date. Okay. Um, if you look at these uh, these homework assignments, you'll notice that chapter one has a couple asterisks next to it. Chapter one is treated a little bit different than the other the other sections. Um, for chapter one, the homework is not going to be available online. Uh, you will have to complete the homework from the textbook and then email your answers to me at tom.brown at enmu.edu. Okay. But for all of the other sections, including the orientation, everything will be done right through my stat lab. Here are the exam um, assignment dates and due dates. You'll notice that for each exam you have about two to three days to complete it other than the final. The final will be taken only on the 27th of July. Remember that for each exam you have two attempts so what you should try to do is take do the first attempt on the assignment date or one day after the assignment date and then do the, the second attempt on one day before the due date or on the due date. So again, make sure that you, that, that you scheduled your first attempt and second attempt, if need be, within the between the assignment due date, I'm sorry, between the assignment date and the due date. Okay. Remember that for the first three exams, that those are done in my stat lab without a proctor. But again, it's expected that the work that you do submit on those exams is your own work. The final exam will be proctored, and it will be done using pencil and paper. Okay. Note the homework and exam due dates will be strictly enforced. You must take the exams during the scheduled testing times, and you must have your online homework assignments finished by the above due dates. Otherwise, you, must you will be assigned a grade of zero for exams and homework assignments, not finish in the given time constraints. So again, it's very, very important that um, you 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 uh, uh, schedule your time during the eight weeks of class so that you can complete all the assignments between the assignment date and the due date. Right. You'll notice that below the links that we've just clicked on and, and discussed that there's some additional links. Um, You'll see that there are the formulas that you can use 
on your tests, so you will be allowed to use a formula sheet on your test. There are reviews for uh, the first exam, second exam, and third exam. There's also a review for the final, and there's a formula sheet for the final. And finally, there are the Z and T tables. These are these are two tables that you will you will need in the course to work problems that involve the T distribution and the normal distribution. Uh, there is okay. So if you look on the left hand side, I'm going to click on chapter notes. Okay, chapter notes takes you to a page that has a list set of links for all the PowerPoint slides for this particular course. So for example, for chapter one, if you click on this link right here, it will bring up a PowerPoint slide for chapter one, which, which you should go through before you attempt to uh, work on the homework from chapter one. So again, these slides are, are, like a good, are a good introduction to each of the chapters before you actually try to do the homework assignments. On the left-hand side, you'll see a blue um, a blue box that says "Do Homework." This is what you click on if you want to do homework in this in this course. When you click on that particular um, blue box, it will take you to this page right here. You notice that it gives you a list of all of the homework assignments for this course. These are all the homework assignments that you'll be required to complete in this course. You'll notice to the left of each homework assignment, you'll see a due date. Okay, so these again are the dates um, by which you have to have each of these assignments completed. Remember that you that that there is no leeway in terms of the due dates. These are these are strictly enforced. Okay, if you click on one of these, let's go ahead and click on the one for section 2.1. It takes you to this page, and then what you simply do is click on the question and begin to work, and it will take you through all the questions in sequence. Again, um, you will be allowed to redo problems that you get wrong, and you can work them until you feel that, that you have mastered that particular content. You'll see that there is there is a link where you can take a test. Okay. So again, during the semester, you will be taking tests, and those will show up in this particular section of my stat lab. Okay. There is the ability to check your grades. So again, if you if you click on gradebook, it will take you to this page, which will give you a listing of your grades. It's a good thing to, to make sure that you, you, you keep on top of that um, so that you know where you are in the course as you, as you work along. If you click on Chapter Contents on the left-hand side, it will take you to this page. Okay, this gives you access to the textbook as an e-book. Right, so again, you don't have to buy the textbook. If you buy My Stat Lab, you will get access to the tech textbook in electronic format. So for example, let's say what I want to do is I want to look at section 2.1 in the book. Simply click down. I get to this page and up at the top it says multimedia textbook section. If you click on that, it will take you to the ebook for section 2.1. So again, this is exactly what's in the textbook if you were to buy the textbook but it's in electronic format. Okay, during the semester we will be using a piece of software called StatCrunch. Okay, StatCrunch is a piece of software that allows you to um, do statistics on data sets. Okay. This is very useful if you're trying to do statistics on a large data set. So let me just show you a few things. So I'm going to go ahead and click on StatCrunch. And then I'm going to pick a particular chapter. Let's pick chapter 2. And then I'll pick, I will pick, chat, let's say, section 2.2. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and click Find Now. At the bottom, I'm going to click on Chapter 2, StatCrunch.
When you do that, it gives you this view right here. If you look at this view, it looks a lot like an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so you see these cells, rows, and columns. <laughs> you can enter data into this spreadsheet just like it's, it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, there are pull-down menus that allow you to do various statistical operations on that data. Um, on the left-hand side, you'll see that there are data sets. These are data sets that are referenced in the book. So, um, for example, at some point in the semester, we, we may want to look at the, the, the gas mileage for a set of cars. This is data collected by the EPA. We may want to do some analysis on this, on this data. We may want to calculate the average of this data. We may want to do a histogram. But we can do all of that very easily within StatCrunch. And as the data sets get larger, let's say we have a data set that had 100,000 elements, we wouldn't want to do it by hand. We would want to go ahead and use StatCrunch to do the computation for us. So StatCrunch is very useful. It's important that you become comfortable with using software like this because most of the statistics that are done today are done in large data sets and they're done using software. discussion board. As we mentioned before, you're expected to submit at least 10 discussion threads during the semester and you'll do them through this particular part of my stat lab. Okay. If you click on the installation wizard on the left hand side, what it does is it brings you to a page which you should use to check to make sure that your installation at home is compatible with my stat lab. So if, by running this wizard it will make sure that you have all the right plugins and that's an important thing to do because because during the semester if you don't have the right plugins then you may have some things that aren't that aren't displayed in my stat lab. The final thing I want to discuss in my stat lab are the lectures. Okay. So as mentioned before the lectures for this course are recorded. The lectures were recorded by Dr. Jarman um, back in fall 2011. Okay, these are very, very useful. Um, it's important that you watch these lectures before you attempt to do the homework from each of the sections. Okay. To get there, you just click over here on, on this, this link. And it brings you to this page right here. And if you look at this page, you'll notice that it has a mention of many different sections and then it has a, a link to that particular lecture. Right. These links are to <clears throat> media site files that are displayed that are displayed at ENMU. So for example, let's say if let's say I want to look at the lecture Lecture 2, which is from Chapter 1, Lecture of Chapter 1, what I do is I copy this link into my browser. So I open another pane. I simply copy that into the browser, hit return. It brings you to this site right here, so it's going to bring you to the media site. What you do here is you type in your ENMU. username and your ENMU password. And if all that works fine, then it will sign you into the media site, okay? You'll notice <coughs> that in this particular window you have you have two panes, you have the left pane, you have the right pane. The left pane will show you what is happening in the classroom. It will show you Dr. Jarman lecturing. The right pane you will see the uh, the screen for the computer that's in the front of the classroom. So again, um, these are, are very very useful. Okay. Okay. Just a heads up on the first on the first lecture. Okay, let's go back. On this first lecture right here, okay, what you should do is start 
watching this lecture at about 18 minutes. The first